Hello everyone and welcome to this episode of the Info Runners. And today I am joined by Execute and Algrid. Welcome back, Algrid. Good to be back. And uh, this episode we're going to be talking about the Reliant series, which sounds an awful lot like a uh, car from Top Gear that Algrid always talks about. Well, the Reliant Robin was a, an interesting um, car that wasn't very reliable. It rolled. Um, it was their butt of all jokes. They even tried to send it to space. Even did an episode of Mr. Bean all about it, which was interesting too. All right, so I yes. think today we'll start out by... Um, do you want to do a caveat? Because we do actually have a caveat for this episode, so you, you go ahead and do that. Yes. It is an important caveat. We are talking about the Reliant, and as you saw in this episode, we are specifically actually going to be talking about how we would fix the Reliant. We are not theory crafting or anything like that. We are just sitting here looking at a ship, like the core's out, and we're like, okay, there's issues with that. The Tana's coming out, and unless some certain things change that aren't in the stat page or anything discussed, it has some issues. The only ones that we like are the uh, Mako Mako. and the Sin, because they actually are utility-based, so the main issues that we have don't apply. And finally, yes, we know there's a new flight model coming in, but some of these changes will not matter, even with a good new flight model. All right, so I guess we'll start with the core. Um, this core ship issue. has, yeah, the core issue. This ship has um, kind of had a bit of a rocky past. We know it's recently had a, a rework, and it's gone from six SCU to eight, um, and that puts it in line with, say, something like the three hundred I. For me, though, I, I still think, um, and this is kind of a little bit across all the variants. Uh, Excuse me. It doesn't work very well with the utilizing the second uh, person in this ship, and I think that that's kind of a, a theme you'll notice here. And yeah, you could say that they haven't implemented some of those things yet, um, but I, I, I also firmly believe that some of the choices they've made. And to give an example with the the core, the ball turret's been removed. Um, and I think we'll all agree that the ball turret would have been a really good thing to see the second person utilize, uh, you know, even if they could turn the guns backwards mm. and defend the ship. Um, and the only other ship that I can think of that kind of can do that, uh, other than the Mustang that's a solo ship, uh, you don't see something like that until you get up to the Star Fera, where it has the actual the turrets facing backwards. Um, my other little issue is, is is obviously the cargo. I think it could carry some more cargo, whether it be on the wings or under the wings like a 100i. Um, but that's my problems with it. What about you guys? What what do you uh, see the issue? Algrid? Well, very similar, very similar to you. I find that this ship has a very large um, signature. It's huge. It's wide when it's in landing mode. It's high when it's in flight mode. Mm. Uh, I remember back to when we did the um, Citizen Con live streams and we took the Arrow and the Mustang and the Gladius and we landed them next to each other and the Mustang was huge. And this dwarfs the Mustang just in width when it's landed and it dwarfs the in terms of height. If you're doing racing, it, it's awkward to fly through the rings because of, because of the width and stuff. Now, maybe it's just because I suck as a pilot. Would well be, <laughs> but it's worth mentioning the wings. I was gonna say just just mention what you're saying about the Delta and the uh, the the Tanner uh, before the show because that's something that's very important. I think the how those two match up. Do you remember what you were saying, or did you want to say it for you? I personally can't remember. So. Okay, so so basically you were saying that the the Delta, or it might have been Dyson that said, maybe I've mixed you guys up, but the the Delta and the the Reliant Tanner are about the same in price, and they're almost exactly the same in all guns and, and little categories like that. Except that in addition to that, the 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 Delta is a lot smaller. It's got a lot smaller silhouette, and then you've obviously got the bigger one for this, but also it's got the pods and armor. So. It, all, all of a sudden, the Tanner's in this really bad spot. But we'll talk about the Tanner more when we get to that. Dyson, I really still want to hear your opinion on the core. What is, uh, what is your? Do you think what what changes would you make? Well, with the core specifically, the change I would make is looking at the wings. Use the space to actually give give it some better components. Uh, if you could actually have maybe a, uh, an extra shield generator, make it a little bit more bulky, and then uh, that also adds gameplay for your uh, co-pilot, 
I would also add to it uh, the ability for the co-pilot to actually get out and walk around the ship to repair it from the inside. Because right now, there's no ability to get out of there unless you're in landing mode, which it looks cool, sounds cool, but it you have that extra crew member. Mm. Use it. I think, again, yeah. that's a fundamental problem of the, the entire style of the ship. Uh, and, and going back, going to the, the wings, if you're not going to use that space on the wings, like you were saying earlier, you know, you can shoot off the wings, the tips of the wings on the ship, and it still doesn't really have any impact on it. Yeah. Um, I'll, I'll if you're not you using that space, shrink the, shrink the size down. Like, what's that image you had earlier? Yeah, I'm going to bring this up. So this is actually one of the original images of, of the Reliant when it was first designed. And um, you were saying about one of the other ships, Agrid, the in the, the campaign? Yeah, the, the, the red kind of... Yeah, it was like a, a pre it's like a pre-built one that they they purchased just to put in the background and a lot of people really liked it and I think that's where this idea for this ship really originally and that, started. And that kind of picked up those, those images and, and stuff. Um, and the thing with the turret as, as you were saying before, that, that the ability to have the co-pilot actually do Speak something. Speak up, I agree. Turn the gunner and, you know, the ability to have that ball turret and the um, the co-pilot control the gun and have a 360 degree arc of fire that makes this an awesome ship and as as you were saying execute the mustang can do it mm. but you know you've got to look back to do it and the second you look forward well the turret follows you follows where you're looking so yeah. it really loses that advantage um it would so make, something... make it so much stronger like the, just the ability to have yeah. that teamwork and i even think the teamwork in this ship would rival, if not exceed, the Banu Defender, just because of, of of the ball turret. Like, there's no ability, unless I'm wrong, I'm pretty sure I'm right, on the Defender to make the guns look back like that. You're really just having it so that it can shoot slightly off to the left and right, and that's basically it. So, well, the yeah. thing is, on the Tana, that's really where it would succeed with the two ball turrets, because then it goes into a ship instead of having just the, the one turret which I, I would say the defender would not really compare to but you have Xeon engine tech in this and then you have two turrets and you have full three uh 60 degree fire that's that then takes something like your tana into a whole new level as in you fly they shoot and Guess what? It's now actually a proper superiority fighter. <laughs> I, I think that's one other thing you need to add. We were just mentioning flight and um, the new flight model, obviously, is this ship being a wing as opposed to most... You know, when you put your hand out the window, most aeroplanes fly with their wings horizontal, so you, you can quickly go up and down. Uh, this ship being sideways, you'll quickly be able to go side to side. Um, I think mm. it won't be, in my imagine it is just in my imagination, will be different, but not better. So it'll be um, maybe able to elude other ships better because it just turns in a different way to the way they turn. Uh, but if it has to kind of turn up or down, obviously that will be where it's detrimental. Mm. Um, the other advantage well, could again, be... our engines rotate like this, though. Well, I was going to say the other advantage... Yeah, but if you think about it, if you fire that engine on the right side, it helps it turn. Um... Mm. The other thing is, if it does turn the wing back to normal vertical, can it then all of a sudden fly like a normal plane? So that that's another wait and see element as well. Um, these are uh, general the things. Thing, sorry, go ahead. So the other thing I was going to say is with the co-pilot, like when they originally concepted the ship and sold it, that was the ace in a hole with this ship as they it, as they sold it. It was the big this, selling the ace point. in a hole with this. It's a big selling point. It's got a second seat, yeah. and at the moment that second seat is useless now as we were saying earlier um admittedly that's something every ship bar i think the 600i has you know the co-pilot sit there and twiddle their thumbs whereas at least on the 600i you see them well pirate the management turrets. is becoming more of a thing and that's one really nice thing that you can look forward to in the future but power management will only get you so far mm. and, and shields yeah. as well um it's, look my, my thing for this this is probably the, a slightly more important point to add to that algorithm, is I would not be worried because you could say, oh, it's still in development. They're going to do that. But in the mm -hmm. rework, when they rework the core, they remove the ball turret. Now, is that just for the core or is that for the entire line? And why was it removed yeah. from the core? Because it's obviously something it really needed. Yeah, and that, that kind of takes that 
that edge that it had, doesn't it? Like, having that co-pilot be able to control that gun and turn it back gives it the advantage over the Mustang where you've got to look back and then while you're looking back, you can't see where you're headed. Um, so, yeah, it's a well big advantage it had but seems to possibly be gone. So I think we've beat that uh, that horse pretty dead. Uh, <laughs> right so now. That, that, that's the core. Let's move you, on to the town of them. You, you, you think we've reliably covered the top? Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, I'm going to start out on the tanner because I've uh, I've got some Photoshop here, so I'm going to do a little bit of drawing here for you guys. Uh, so just bear with me. I really need to set up my colors. So I'm just going to do some red here. So my first idea here, I've got a few ideas that I had here. You see this spot here between, uh, on the back. So imagine you're in the cargo area back here. And this idea was originally brought up by uh, Dyson and we've worked it through a little bit. Is what if this had missile or, I'm just going to do a couple here, very, very ugly. Uh, edit, fill, uh, red. Is what if it actually had missile ports or um, uh, torpedoes, even that you could you could put into the ship and uh, fire from back here. Uh, now, what would you guys think about that as an idea? Absolutely amazing, because it brings it into a whole new class of ship. You basically take the uh, idea of the freelancer miss, and you start adding missiles onto it. You turn this thing into because ah! it really. Sorry. It really doesn't have the firepower. Uh, when you look at what it says on the store page, yes, store page subject to change, it doesn't have the firepower It's uh, of the Avenger. It doesn't have the firepower of the 300 series. Uh, the arrow is fairly close in price to it, and you, it doesn't have, it's outgunned. But if you give it missiles, it's an entry level missile boat, or if you put, like, even if you put two large torpedoes on there. Not like large, large. We're talking about maybe the size four style. It becomes a ship that actually has a unique role. Yeah, and I, I, I think the only other ship that would come close to it is something like the Gladiator, um, being at that uh, size. Like that'd be the next largest ship, and I also think it would actually bring it back into like where it needs to be as a combat ship. Um, and I also think it kind of makes it feel a little bit more like the slave from Star Wars, personally. The other way, they, the other thing you could do with missiles is actually have missile pods there like... Um, like on the wings you know, here, like pods. this? No, two missile pods in that same position you're talking about. Um, yep. Like the uh, Mustang has. And so... Yep, that's another possibility, yep. Um, the, the other thing... Question... Uh, to go with that though is what components are going in that space what's what is that space required for is there any systems that need to go there well, to have, make it work they have beds and stuff but the issue i have mm. is why would you have a bed on this particular fighter because you get you have the beds and you have this weird like mm. chair control console thing yep. if you look at the last chair, interior chair, image. Chair, it's very similar to the sen and the mako it's got like a chair <laughs> and some kind of computer i think it had a shower the other two don't have a shower but it was like a long range fighter it looked kind of strange it was a bit it's a bit uh, ad hoc in my opinion yeah Can, it doesn't make sense again with how we weakly gunned it is and you would actually be better off if you didn't even put the missiles there. Just putting a uh, keep the beds and then have a couple of bounty pods there and a uh, and actually a weapons rack. And because why do you need that extra control console back there? You'd actually be better off turning this into a two person bounty ship, which would actually be really cool because yeah, you can take that second person. That a of couple of bounty uh, cells would be great. You know, it gives you a two man a two man bounty hunting crew. So you go after a target. I was, yeah, got say, I was just going to say it definitely brings it in line with the uh, Avenger in that in that configuration. The other um, thing I just want to show while we're drawing pictures real quick, because then I'll go back to the normal screen, is this is currently the setup they have for what, how they want to do missiles. Now, because of the way this is built, it can only have size one missiles. So if you were to, you could either um, put them on the outside wings like this, or what if they even had... Um, I don't even know how to explain this, but in Iron Man, there's a particular scene where they have these pop-out little missile darts. So you could actually have this whole wing here literally just raise up, and then you could have the missile rack inside. Um, 
almost like mm. a, a drawer that opens and uh, yeah, fires the missiles out. That way you could at least have different size missiles if you want them. Um, so that, that's my two little ideas there for that. Size one is sad. Very. There we go. Back. Oh, it popped in the way. It doesn't matter. Um, yeah. So yeah, obviously you could also just put the missiles on the outside of the wing as well, like like every other ship <laughs> in the game. Um, I, I just... Uh, you know, and that, the, and that could be something they do just based on the fact that in the past they've said, you know, when we do it internally, it, it adds more work and more, more problems, and yeah. uh, which is why we've found them on the outside more often than not. Another one that our grid mentioned was um, putting a bigger shield in at the back there. So it has like a shield generator at the back to make the ship, if it's got lesser guns, then at least it can stay around for a bit longer because one, it's got a bigger profile, so it's going to get hit more. So if you have bigger shields, it can stay around longer. So that, that made a lot of sense to me. And um, the other one I toyed with was what if you had uh, heat, uh, like heat seeking mines or something or a mine layer that you can drop out the back or... Um, uh, uh, what was the? What did you call them? You called them like dead. What was the missiles that you were naming? They'll basically still missiles. You, yeah, you drop it out, and it, it eventually will lock onto a target and go. Whoop. How's, right how's, on that, it. Uh, how's that go again? Boop. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we can. We can both imitate Dyson. Yeah, um, but something like that would actually give again would make the ship um unique uh so if you had a you know any any fight of it could drop mines a bit like the um where we see that you know the hawk with its with its solo prison pod it's unique as a as a bounty hunter it it, it you know if you've got a ship that can drop something that's unique it, it gives it that edge um and it, it gives it that longevity longevity of life and, and that's sometimes I think what you may want in some of these ships, a, a reason why you actually may want to keep them around rather than ditch mm. it for the next. I think one of the uh, one of the changes I'd probably make in hindsight is really making the wings smaller, going back towards mm. maybe that you know even if it had squared off wings, so it was really just kind of like two columns down the side that rotated around the ship. I think that would be really cool. Um, the other thing that they could almost utilize is the ability that as it flies through the air, that rotates. I think that would be really, really cool. And it was yeah. actually the reason I bring it up. Kind of, is, like, kind of like Spock's ship in. Um, yes, a little bit like that. Fire. A little bit like that. But the, the Scout, the Zion Scout originally, as it moved through the air, that's what it was going to do. It was going to articulate and switch and change. And now it's more of this vertical thing that just kind of rotates, um, not to the same extent. And I think this would be kind of cool as if if it kind of almost barrel rolled in some, like when it turned, it the whole wing was used to turn the ship. So, not, you know, you, you, you turn to the right and the ship stands still, but it, you know, and then it goes that way. I don't know how to explain that, but I think there could be something really clever done with the ship that just hasn't been utilised. It may be there but, down the road, but we just can't see it, or we haven't been notified about it. I have a feeling they moved away from that type of re real articulation. We saw it with the uh, Cutlass, like the Cutlass engines, yes. you know, the way they used to spin and do everything else. They looked awesome. Yeah. But that doesn't do it anymore. Yeah, it's not functional. Um, and I... You know, and so I think that idea of this ship that rotated and, and to help it turn, I think that is kind of like what the, the engines on the Cutlass were doing. Mm. And I think they've kind of gone away from that, that method. So um sounds cool, but yeah. is it too much work? All right, is there anything else you guys want to add before we wrap up? Not particularly. Again, it just they just need to do something in the future to bring all of these ships in line or give it utility. Because, again, utility is why we don't knock the other two variants. All right, then. Well, guys, please leave in the comments below suggestions and changes that you would make to these variants. And that can also include the Mako and the Sen. And what do you also like positively about the ship? Because I, I think I hear a lot of people talk very negatively about the ship a lot of the time, but I don't hear a lot of positives. So I actually do want to hear some of that as well. I want to know what, what particularly makes you think this ship stands out from the pack, but also what little changes you would make. And I don't think it does really need big changes. 
uh, that would make this ship back on track. And also remember, we're trying to balance it at its price point. So it's sitting at $65 for, is that the Tanner guys? I think it was 65 for the Tanner. But um, yes. what I'm trying to say is, just remember, it can't all of a sudden become the best ship ever. It's got to sit where it sits for its price. But I would love to hear people's comments. Uh, join us on Discord, have a chat with us there if you want to chat with us there. Like this video if you like it, hate it if you hate it whatever you want to do. Thanks very much for being here today. He's been Algrid, he's been Dyson, I've been Execute, and we'll catch you next time. Take care.